Welcome to the new episode of Secrets of Trading with uh, Sharma FX and Stefano's FX, everybody. So as always, we got a new topic for you guys, and today we're going to talk about time management. Take it away, Steph. What's going on, guys? Hope everyone's having a great day. Uh, it's Friday. We just wanted to release this episode. And what we did was we actually asked the audience and everyone on Instagram mm -hmm. what they wanted to hear from us. And one of them was time management. Actually, two of them were time management. And um, it got me thinking about, and I believe I've covered this in my course. I'm sure you have as well. And we've talked about it on other podcasts. But like today's day and age, um, there's many distractions for you guys that I hear from everybody about how social media, how the internet, how their computer, how everything is just grabbing people's attention. Yep. And it's taking them away from the main thing, which is advancing in their career or getting better at a skill set so on and so forth. So um, one thing that we wanted to go over was time management. So when it comes to scheduling, um, we were just having this conversation off the off the recording about how important it is to have the same exact schedule every single day. Now, you guys that have jobs, you guys that have nine to fives, you guys go to work every single day at the same exact time. You come home at the t same time. That could be mundane. That could start to get boring after a while. And I could very well see how boring that is me with uh, our driving company um i'm on the road at a different time every single day so in the morning i can control my morning and really after that i can't control anything everything is different which i like i grew up as more of a spontaneous person um i didn't i didn't i knew there was i didn't want to be behind a desk every single day earlier on maybe working for the man or you know Working in a nine to five doing that, that wasn't me, but I do like working behind a desk, but more for myself. So at that point, when I was younger, realized I wanted to be out on the road. I wanted a different thing every single day, different scenario, meeting new people every single day, which has been amazing for connections. But at the same time, now with my career, with, you know, the mentorship, trading, everything, business, it's getting, it's taking more of my time where now I want to be able to sit down at a computer the same exact time every single day. I want to get the same exact sleep every single day, which is super important. We could get into that. And then also working out at the same time every single day. So your body is physically used to it. So what I was going to do is I was going to go through a schedule where if you have an open day, right, this is kind of how you want to base your day. Um, starting from the morning routine all the way until nighttime. So mm -hmm. what I did was for me, uh, I normally wake up around 4.30 a.m. Say that this is like, again, a day that I don't have any drives and I, I have nothing scheduled other than Zooms with clients and, and um, you know, different meetings that I have with other people as well. So 4.30, wake up all the way until 6.30 is my morning routine. So what I normally do is when I wake up, I drink a glass of water. I'll go and do a deck of cards and the deck of cards. That's uh, if you want to know about that, we could get into that, but I don't want to go off on too much of a tangent, but um, I do a workout in the morning, right? Right after that workout is a, is a uh, protein shake. Right after that protein shake is a cold shower to wake myself up even more. You're already pretty much woken up after the workout, but the cold shower is definitely another test for you to get uncomfortable. And it's major physical um, benefits that you have as well for that. It's very healthy for you. But the main thing is it, it's better than coffee. It just wakes you up. It gets you going for the morning. So um, right after that, I'll basically get dressed, obviously, hop onto the computer um, and just start reading articles, understanding what's going on in the market, understanding where I want our live stream to go as far as breaking everything down first before we hop on and then, and then we end up hopping on from there. So that's that's up until 6.30 when we start our live stream. Now, for you guys, what I want you to do, actually, I'm going to share my screen real quick. Sharma, can you let me share? Yeah, give me one second. Go awesome. for it. You know, this is stuff that we have talked about in our live stream, too. So if you guys hop in, you know, during our live session, sometimes we do them on Wednesdays or Fridays. Uh, this is the type of stuff that we have talked about, like particularly just, you know, having a schedule and how important it is like for time management but what you mentioned like when you were younger uh you were very spontaneous so i think it's pretty cool when uh you know you're older you start to see how your work kind of reflects your personality as well because not everyone's able to do stuff like this right everyone a lot of people they need like uh a set schedule uh but for most people 
uh, like we were talking about, uh, you know, when you have a, a nine to five job and particularly like for me, I think it's more of when I talk to people where they start to you know express that, you know, they're not really happy with the nine to five or they're viewing it more as a challenge rather than an opportunity. And you know, that's something that we have talked about, too, where think of it like you're literally getting paid to acquire skills. So you don't have to go do a particular job. You could really acquire the skill sets that you want to go do any job that you want. If you want to break into finance, you know, go work in finance and you're literally getting paid to acquire those skill sets to go later, do something of your own, you know, with those skill sets. So a lot of times I get more of uh, when people have the same schedule, they don't really realize that, you know, that that's something that's important. Uh, but when it's some someone like myself or Steph knows where every day, we don't have a set schedule where uh, a lot of times we try to have like a, a set schedule, right? I have my calendar that's open. I have like all the, like the meetings and stuff that I have to do and everything else that I have to, uh, you know, do throughout the day, it's all on my calendar. If it's not my calendar, it's, I'm probably not going to do it, right? Um, so things like that. And I just tell people at that point where I have, you know, a couple of hours here and there that are free. So then if someone needs a meeting or something like that, I just tell them like, you know, you're going to have to find a slot that's open because literally after um, around 8 a.m. Uh, PST going all the way up until like five, six, maybe even seven o'clock, it's just straight meetings or just taking care of other work, uh, especially since we have students that are like not just from the United States, from like all over the place, you know, working with their schedule, where for some people I have to do the meetings in the morning because it's nighttime for them. Right. So I can't have them do meetings with me in the afternoon because that's literally midnight for them. It doesn't make sense. Right. For some people, they're going to have to wake up uh, very early, you know, in their time. So then we can do a meeting in the evening and then in the daytime, obviously taking care of the stuff that I'm doing here uh, in the United States, in California. So there's a lot of things that we can't control on a day to day. Right. But when it's something like that, when you're so used to like just putting out the fires every day and whatnot, uh, that's when you start to realize that, you know, it would be nice to have some sort of a normal schedule, at least majority of the days. Yeah, no, I like the fact that you brought up the uh, the schedule and how like you'll write it out and your day's not going to go exactly that way. Like things are going to yeah. pop up. You're going to get a phone call here. Um, things are going to throw you off and that gets frustrating. And that can almost, almost be kind of detrimental to your mental psychology because you know, you're, you're so regimented. It, I, when I do this right here, what I'm about to do for you, it's it's not meant to be like exactly like that. It's never going to be exactly like that. But for the most part, if you could keep most of your day in control, you're going to be good. And you're going to have some lenient time where, like I said, uh, something could pop up. Um, it, it, it could throw you off. But the other thing I wanted to talk about is like what you were just saying with being spontaneous and um, you know, working through your day and everything being kind of different. This is almost like, like that was a challenge for me. And we're always trying to get more challenges, trying to achieve more things. This is like, I'm kind of testing myself to see how much more dangerous I could be basically with a set schedule. Like I know what I could do without a set schedule and the, the days are different and I, it is much harder. I don't want to be that person that's like, you know, my schedule is so much harder because it's, you know, uh, spontaneous and, and every day is different. But at the same time, like I know what I could be doing with the same exact schedule every single day. I know it, but I don't yet. And I want to see what exactly that does for me. So it's going to be a cool year uh, moving out there and, and doing that. But again, starting over here with the morning routine, do you have anything else to say, Shrema? Uh, No, go for it. Okay, cool. So the, the morning routine, right after that, the live stream over here, 6.30, to 9 a.m. is going to be our live stream. Now, again, your day is not going to go exactly like this, but these are the kind of or, uh, time blocks that you could set. You could do one-hour time blocks, two, three-hour time blocks are pretty common. I have a three-hour time block, two of them in here. I'll show you with you in a second. But um, you can do it however you want, but you got to have some kind of a time block where you're scheduling your day out and you're sticking to these certain times where you cut something off where you start something new as long as you do that you're turning your day into a habit that's uh is that exactly where you want to be so 9 a.m that also reminds me that i wanted to mention i forgot to mention while i was uh talking was that the reason why we're trying to go over time management today is because 
this is an important skill regardless of wherever you're going, not even just to obviously to be an entrepreneur, if that's something that you guys are interested in, you know, something having like that time freedom to do your own thing and whatnot. But even like, you know, if you're working like a nine to five or, you know, anything else, a time management, having proper time management skills is extremely important uh, because without that, you're going to start to see like, you know, if you can't manage your time, you're not being effective, right? You're just going to keep yourself busy, you know, throughout the day, but you're not really being effective. So that's why this is so important. Uh, I'm not saying account for every single hour in your day, but it's more of, you know, how well can you manage your time across a lot of other important uh, tasks and, and still get stuff done, right? Majority of the stuff that you need done that day. So that's kind of what we do. You know, there's, um, of course, like we said, our schedules are not the same. Pretty sure you guys have heard us say this like a broken record many times over like what the past year, maybe over a year that we've been doing this stuff yeah. together. Yeah. So everything's but, just cranking for us. It's uh, it's great. But at the same time, it's, you know, your, your time is valuable, a yeah. lot more valuable now. Yeah. And so there should be like key things that <clears throat> want to accomplish that day. So I know like going into every day, what are some of the key things I need to accomplish? You know, I have about almost like six to seven things minimum that I need to accomplish, right? They're like high priority for me. And no matter what, I need to get that done. Of course, there's gonna be changes in between. Of course, you know, there are gonna be people who need to change meetings around or whatever it may be. So accommodating stuff like that, um, you know, as much as I can, but, you know, there's key things that I need to make sure that before my head hits the bed uh, that I have accomplished those. Yesterday was more of a, a busy day for me uh, from like morning to evening. And so it ended up being one of those days where usually I go to sleep around like, you know, 9, 30, 10 o'clock, but I didn't go to sleep until like 1 a.m. because I, li I literally tried. I was like, let me just go to sleep like on a normal time, whatever time mm -hmm. I would be going to sleep. Uh, and I'll just, you know, do this task tomorrow. But I guess like we're programmed in a specific way. It's like I could not sleep where I know that I need to get the stuff done. So I need to do it. Right. And so I was up until like <clears throat> doing that and then woke right back up today, like around uh, four o'clock, four thirty once again for our live session. Yeah, no, that's that's all integrity right there. When you know there's things that you need to get done and you do them no matter what, that's you. Yep. Um, so I left these two spots open right over here. So these two spots right here are deep work sessions. And if you guys ever read Deep Work by Cal Newport, you'll you'll know what I'm talking about. Those are sessions where you throw your phone on the other side of the room and you just get into your work. You get into a flow state where nothing is distracting you at all. No social media, no YouTube, no TV, nothing. You could put on some classical music. I actually have on my uh, the, the link in my bio. There's a uh, playlist on Spotify if you guys want to check it out. It's just what I used to read and uh, back test to and also review journals. Uh, listen, uh, read articles as well. I just put this music in the background and it helps me get into more of a flow state. So this will be a deep work session. It'll be my first one of the day. And that'll be more for my own trading. So that'll be journaling previous trades. It'll be reviewing my trades. It'll be back testing on my own. It'll be doing everything from my own trading. The second time block over here, right from 2.30 to 5 o'clock after a meal, and a, and a break at two o'clock that lasts around like 20, 30 minutes to give yourself a, you know, you could, you could scroll social media if you want, you could just relax for a second, take it easy and then go on to that deep work session where another three hours, pretty much you're doing work on your business or businesses. So if you have two businesses, that's what you want to be, you know, splitting your time up into there. And then again, from 11 to two, what you could be doing is splitting each hour into one activity after the other. Like, so one hour is journaling, one hour is back testing, one hour is reviewing my previous trades, so on and so forth, right? So same thing over here. One, one hour could be a Zoom with somebody, one hour could be a Zoom with uh, somebody else that needs help uh, outside of the group. And the other one could be, you know, just reviewing previous trades of people in the group. Um, this is gonna be your break. And meal four. Um, and then what did I have here? 
Oh, no, that's not built for. That is going to be an Asian breakdown. So, again, this is my ideal day if I'm home all day long. So, 520 to 6. And, of course, you know, to switch these things around, you know, according to however uh, your schedule is. So, like, let's say, for example, if you're working, obviously, like, you know, there's going to be set blocks of time where you cannot do anything else but work, right? Uh, but you know, you would fit that in and try to work your schedule around that. I think the most important thing is, uh, you know, especially like what you have stuff on right now is like deep work with business. If you don't have a business, then just acquiring other skill sets um, and working on those skill sets, right? If you're learning how to trade, if you're new to trading, then, you know, taking the time to go through educational content, right? Uh, trading related, books, podcasts, videos, uh, whatever it may be, going through that, or even just, uh, you know, any other skill sets that you want to acquire, maybe trading full time is not something that you want to do. I mean, that's what majority of the people want to do, but maybe that's not something that you want to do, right? Maybe you want to continue working. Maybe you're a software engineer. You really like that. And that's what you want to be doing. Or maybe, you know, you're aspiring to be something else, a doctor, CFA, whatever it may be, you know, working on those and developing those skills. Um, that I think that's also very important. Regardless, I think you should continue developing your skills. It doesn't matter, you know, whether it's just trading related or anything else. You should always be looking to better yourself. 100%. Always. Any kind of free time that you have, you're just basically choosing what you want to do uh, or what's better for you in the future instead of what you want right now. Mm -hmm. And again, that's all time management is. It's just discipline. Like, can you stick to these times? It's the the first test that you can have for yourself if you're disciplined, right? So um, again, working through this, you were I was able to squeeze another uh, deep work session in here for about two and a half hours. And that's basically just finishing my, my nightly routine and everything that I got to do for the rest of the night. And then again, nightly routine, that's like when I was talking about morning routines, having that cold shower at night, you want to hop into a warm shower, get your body ready to go to sleep. Don't be on your phone as much as you can, right? Read a book if you can. With you guys that are single, right? If you guys don't have a significant other that you got to kind of split your time with uh, and you're just going to bed and just watching Netflix, that's that's probably not the, the right move for you um, being single. Use that advantage for yourself that you don't have to split that time with other people and read a book, right? Or, or do something more productive, listen to a podcast or something like that. That's something me and my wife do every once in a while. Every, I would say, three to four times uh, a week throughout the entire week, instead of watching something on TV, we try to watch something educational and try to get us better at real estate, which is something that we want to get into, um, you know, in the next year or two. So um, this is a morning routine, guys. Time block yourselves, right? It's not going to go exactly like this, but you want to have a good basis. At least you're guiding your day off of. And every single time you look at the clock, you're like, okay. This time, after you know running through this for a few weeks, you're going to know exactly what time you should be doing what if you start to lose track. So if you're looking at the clock and it's 1035, it's like, and you're not at the gym, it's like, I should really be in the gym right now. And that can add some guilt to you right there, where if you miss that one day, it's okay to miss a day, but as long as you don't miss the two days, right? Then the two days, it becomes a habit where you start stacking, um, compounding actions over another habit which is missing. You now identify as somebody that's missing two days in a row. And we're all guilty of this. This happens. But as long as you get yourself back onto the right track after a day, you're going to be good. I think another important thing here is, you know, like, like I said, you don't have to, you know, have a time block all the time. Like this is more than, you know, discipline is extremely important. That's what the schedule essentially does, right? It forces you to be disciplined, to stick to these timings. But more than that, I think it's more about the consistency. The way that I think about it is for anyone to make any sort of switch and be consistent with it, it takes them at least three months. Because the first month, you know, the person's going to continue their old habits. They're going to try to make some changes. Um, at least they're, they're essentially the type of person who's going to start maybe looking up workout videos, maybe start looking at, you know, what is a potential diet plan going to look like, maybe talking to other people. It's just that first month you kind of made that decision that, yes, I need to make some sort of a change. 
right? And then the second month, but you're still not going to do it your first month. Let's be, let's be real, right? Uh, the first month, you're still going to be kind of inconsistent. You're going to fall off the wagon a little bit. And then the second month is when you're like, okay, well, I need to at least implement some changes. So maybe that's when you start having a better diet, right? Maybe that's when you start having better workouts, right? You kind of figure out, you know, what, what is your workout schedule going to look like? You've implemented some changes, right? And then you start to see a little bit of results. And then that's what motivates you to move on to the third month. And then that's when you actually start, you know, implementing these changes 100%. And that's when you actually start implementing, you know, the perfect diet plan, not perfect, but like, you know, whatever diet plan that works for you, start figuring out, like, I need to go work out before work or after work, start figuring out, like, uh, you know, I need to go acquire a certain skill set. That's why I say like three months, because the first month is more of like, think of it like you are meant to mess up at that time. Same thing in trading where, um, you know, I'm talking to some students like off of Instagram uh, that have been like watching our live streams. And I tell them the same thing, no matter what strategy that you use, no matter what mentorship that you go to, no matter what you do, try at least three months. Cause the first month that you go into a mentorship program, you're going to, you're going to bring in the same information that you have learned somewhere else, right? You understand that that information is not working. You understand that you need to make a change, but going into any mentorship program, the first month, you're still going to bring in everything that you've learned from a previous mentorship, right? Mm -hmm. And you've, at least like at that point, it's more of like, I've recognized that there needs to be a change that needs to be made. Uh, but, you know, you haven't implemented that change yet. Second month, you actually start going through, let's say the webinars that a mentorship might have, start going to the live sessions that a mentorship might have. Uh, so just like implementing a little changes, right? But you're still not consistent. And then you start to see some results and that's what really motivates you to move on to the third month with that strategy, with that mentorship, with whatever it, it is. And then that's when you actually start implementing all the changes when you start to make the decision, the real decision, I, I like to say it, is I need to make the changes and I need to stick to these changes. That's mm -hmm. when you start becoming consistent. So I give like for everything, it's like a three month period, very minimum. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. It, it it that is the minimum. I would say maybe even more than that because like people need to get acclimated, acclimated, and you also need to learn your student as a mentor as well. Yeah. So you guys got to learn their tendencies, and to be honest with you, it doesn't take that long to learn tendencies, but just to get the work in together and the constant communication, constant sending charts, breaking down charts together, looking at previous trades that take that does take a while to get yeah. acclimated to each other and to learn how they want to be coached. Cause then you start hitting your stride. And if you've been on any kind of sports team, you know that you got preseason and then preseason, you're really trying to find your offense or defense, whatever sport you're playing first couple of games of the season, you guys are still trying to find each other. And then once the fourth, fifth week come, uh, come into play after that, it's like, you guys all know exactly how to move together and, and the offense is running well, the defense is running well. If you're a good offense or defense, and if you're a good team, that's typically how it goes. So you want to be getting better as the year is going on. It's the same thing with our relationship as a coach and student. It's just we got to learn each other. And once we do, we're fuck, we're off to the races. Yeah. Um, but what I did was I just drew up a, a schedule over here for what most people probably go through. Right. And what your normal day might probably be like. This is more for like a full time trader and a business owner that works from home. Right. That's that's basically how you need to structure your day. Once you do get to that point um, after like I would say that this right here is going to be your schedule. Now, this is the schedule that you're working towards. So you got to first ask yourself, is this something that I want to have? Or maybe it's you want to go into an office and and that's something that you'd rather be doing and, and get an office space for yourself and leaving home, stuff like that. That would make sense. But over here is what you're probably going through right now, whether it's a three to um, seven to three, nine to five, um, three to 10, any kind of a work schedule like that, you're probably going through this. But what you want to make sure is that you can control your morning and control your night, right? If you can control your morning and night, it's okay if you can't do much during here because most people hurt themselves over here. When you guys get out of work, you guys come home and all of a sudden this entire block right here is just one big break from work. If you guys want to get to where you want to be, you need this time block right here of at least two and a half, three to four hours, I would say, of just straight work. And this could go even later if you want, if you guys could get less sleep. 
I've kind of programmed myself where I only really get like four to five hours of sleep and I can pretty much function. But like, that's not most people. Most people need their seven to eight hours. So that's why I gave you guys nine o'clock here, right? So um, keep in mind, this is detrimental. If you're not using this time wisely right here, this little block, you're, you're not going anywhere. You're kind of doing figure eights. You're just going in circles and thinking you're getting somewhere, but you're not getting that much done. I think an another important thing here is when you're doing the work of realizing, you know, is this, like you said, is it actual, you're, you're being effective in the work, you're actually moving towards a goal, or are you just doing it to do it, right? And that's obviously not the cycle that you want to be in. Another thing that you have uh, mentioned, like with the night routine is a lot of people uh, before they go to sleep, they can't read uh you know a book that's more you know that makes you kind of think right or like a podcast or something like that because then when they're sleeping their mind is just running right so again another coming right back down to being effective where when you're sleeping you want to make sure that you're actually getting the rest right um versus people some people like myself included i could read a book i actually love reading like self-improvement books right something that would make me think uh, but then, you know, I could sleep very well too. Same thing where I could sleep for just, uh, you know, a few hours and I'm perfectly fine because that's something that I've been used to uh, yeah. for a very long time since college. So again, all of this depends on how you are as a person. We just gave you two like general generic schedules. Now it's up to you. Like, how do you uh, kind of mold them into whatever your schedule is like, however you are, you are like as a person. But the most important thing is that in time management, you're working towards a specific goal and you're trying to fit in, you know, in let's say a six hour, seven hour, eight hour, whatever time period, as many as much work as you can to work towards a goal. The most important thing is when you're an entrepreneur and right now, like, you know, I'm single, so I don't have to worry about like, you know, spending my time with another person or whatever versus, you know, Steph, you're married now, right? So the difference between the two is, that you're probably have you probably have a lot less time than I do in a day to be a lot more effective, right? Because you have someone that you need to split the time with at the end, at mm -hmm. the end of the day, right? Mm -hmm. Versus for me, like I have morning to evening until I go to bed to go just do whatever I need to do. Mm -hmm. But what that forces you essentially to do at the end of the day, even if it's like subconsciously, is I only have let's say you know six hours or seven hours to complete you know, one through five, whatever the, the priorities of my, of that day is mm -hmm. versus for me, it's like the time that I wake up to the time that I go to bed. Mm -hmm. And so it's the same exact thing for someone who's like working, right. Someone who has like a nine to five job where you can't really control what's happening between nine to five. You're just going to be working, but mm -hmm. you have, you know, that three to four hour period that, you know, you're talking about after work or before work, depending on your schedule where you have to be effective. And that's where your time management comes in. Don't sit there just on one task and spending all your time on just one task when you know you that you have three tasks that you need to complete that day. 100%. All great value right there. Um, so like with, with, with this, it's like, I hope you guys were just writing this down. All you guys got to do is just go through this right here and write this down real quick. Write down these time slots, right? And if you want to change the time slots, you can. And then start filling in What's important to you first at the top, like you're putting all the important stuff up here at the top, less important stuff will go more at the bottom. Right. And okay, now that you want to do them one better. What we can do is just post the link under our descriptions and YouTube to this, just to this, oh, to this, yeah. Okay. To this spreadsheet. Uh, yeah. So what you can do is just switch it over to like view only. So then, you know, you don't have a ton of people who are just editing on the same document. So you can switch this to view only, and this is a time management template. So we're gonna do you guys one better, right? You don't have to write down the time slots yourself. Here's the template. This, this goes against my uh, <laughs> <laughs> doing it for you guys here. Yeah. <clears throat> copy the link. All right. So yeah, we'll we'll copy this into our. Um, I'll send this over to you right now in the chat. Perfect. So we're going to do you guys one better. I mean, you guys know that we don't like to just hand things to people. We want you guys to kind of work for it too. And, right. And, and we're here, here to help you with those strategies. But 
just to make sure that you know we're not here and there's a lot of times you hit the same excuse from a lot of people i don't have the time to do this i don't have the time to do that we're gonna do you one better here's a template now you fix this template according to however your schedule is and however you want to be effective yeah it's a one-time thing we're not <laughs> we're not handing it again <laughs> yeah no more <laughs> all right so I hope you guys were able to get some good value. Um, but again, you know, whatever you're doing, not just trading, time management is an essential skill, right? Even if you're working, even if you're in school, uh, you know, in college, or if you're doing something else, if you're an entrepreneur, especially, you need to have great time management skills. So I hope you guys were able to, you know, get some good understanding of why time management is important, some strategies on time management, but also we give you guys a schedule on how to create and you know, stick to a time. More than also, yeah, go ahead. Uh, I'm sorry, I was gonna say you can also argue that um, time management has never been more important. Yep. 100%. With today's day and age and social media and and distractions here and there, time management is discipline, like we said before. So yep, as you were and, saying, you know, another thing is just to end it off is also when you guys are going on social media. Um, you know, social media, when it was like kind of first introduced, it was obviously a way to kind of like relax and kind of catch up with friends and whatnot. But there's so much content that's being put out there, you know, try to be cognizant of what kind of information that you're consuming, mm -hmm. right? So if you know that, you know, you're working and you only have like two to three hours, you know, after work or before work or whatever it may be, be cognizant of the things that you're taking in, right? Take in educational content. And now that's why one of the things, for example, that I'm working on uh, with a friend, um, you know, just not to give out like too much information, but is bite-sized content, educational content, because we're so used to just scrolling through TikTok, scrolling through Instagram Reel, that now our attention span is not anything more than 30 seconds. Right, which is sad. As humans, our attention span is nothing less than 30 seconds. Mm -hmm. Maybe a dog has a longer uh, attention span, right? But it's bite-sized content because everyone's life is so busy that we're so used to just like fast pace everything. That's mm -hmm. why you need to be cognizant of the things that you're taking in, yeah. right? And that's like one thing that uh, my friend and I are working on. But, you know, just, just be cognizant of whatever you're doing every day. Just don't do the same thing over and over and over again. Just do it. Make sure that you're actually working towards something. Make sure that you're actually building your skill sets and whatnot. 100%. So, I hope, so I hope this was helpful for you guys. As always, if you guys have any questions, feel free to reach out to either of us on Instagram. Mine's at ShermaFX. Stefano's is Stefano's FX. But other than that, we'll see you guys next week for the weekly outlook. Sounds good. Looking forward to it. Guys, have a great weekend, and we will see you then.